Hello everyone, this is Grace here. In this video, we will be discussing process costing problem 3.15. A factory is engaged in production of chemical X and in the course of its manufacture, a byproduct Y is produced, which after separation process has a commercial value. For the month of January, the following are summarized costing data. So they've given uh, joint expenses and separate expenses. So materials, labor on costs, joint expenses, and for separate expense for X and Y is given here for material labor and on cost. The output for the month was 142 tons of X and 49 tons of Y. The selling price of Y averaged to rupees 280 per ton. And they've given output for the month was 142 tons for X and for Y it is 49 tons. So in this problem, the factory is engaged in the production of chemical X and in the course of its manufacture, byproduct Y is produced. So the main product here is X and its byproduct is Y. So they have given the separate expenses. So what they have asked us to prepare is for the month of January, the following are summarized costing data. So they have asked us to prepare the factory is engaged in production of a chemical X and the course of manufacture byproduct is produced, which after separate as commercial value. So let us continue the problem and look into what they have asked us to prepare. Assuming that profit on Y is estimated at 50% of the selling price. So they have stated profit of Y is estimated at 50% of the selling price. Prepare an account showing the cost of X per ton. So they have asked us to find out what is the per ton value for the cost of X. So a separate cost for Y and X is given as well as the, jo the joint cost is given. So what is the share of Y would be the first calculation. Then we will prepare main product X and the cost of X we will uh, we will find out what is the cost of X and we'll also find out what is the uh, cost per unit per ton cost of product Y. So why are we preparing share of Y in joint, joint cost is because because there's one reason why selling price is given here. That is, they have stated here 49 tons of Y. The selling price of Y averaged to rupees 280 per ton. And they have give the question is followed by the stating that uh, assuming that profit of assuming that the profit on Y is estimated at 50% of the selling price. So why selling price is given? Uh, that is the sales why uh, sale that is selling price that is per ton is given and a profit percentage is given so by this we can find out what is the cost so you can ask me what are these costs then which is given here separately they have given separately isn't it x is given separate y is given separate here yes these are the cost of x and y but this cost is incurred after separating the product from the main product so before separation it would be uh, the before separation there would have been many costs which has been incurred so this is after separation so when you take a raw material only after a certain process you undergo then you uh, make uh, you find out and the waste material will become the byproduct materials so for to divide that waste material you would have incurred many expenses that is that expenses will all be included before separation so this is then expenses which is after separation so what is the expenses before separation so that is why we use reverse cost method when we use reverse cost method it will give you exactly what is the cost before separation so here they have given us to prepare before separation cost either we need to know the selling price of anything the main product or the byproduct here they have given the selling price of the byproduct of Y, they have given the selling price where it is rupees 280 per ton. So as we know, it is 49 tons is being sold by Y at a price of 280 per ton, and they've given us profit also. So sales, my sales minus profit will give you total cost total cost minus if you have any expenses selling expense you will minus that then you will get your cost of production from your cost of production you will minus your separate expenses that is sub uh, cost incurred after separation that is nothing but this cost separate expenses which is known which is also known as subsequent subsequent expenses so that cost you will minus and you will get your exact cost that is cost up to separation or before separation you will get so we need to find out that when we find out that from the total cost of x that is the main product's cost we can minus this y share and we can find out what is the cost per unit for x that is what they have asked in the question so let us prepare uh, the proportion or the share of y 
So first is calculation of share of Y in joint cost. So share of value of Y by product. So how many products uh, by product is Y? So how many tons are sold by Y? It is given in the question 49 tons at rupees 280 per ton. So we will 40 into 280 will give you 13,720. So that is the sales. With the sales, we will minus profit to get our total cost. So they have given in the question the profit is 50% of selling price. So, how much is your selling price which is 13,720 uh, into 50% will give you 6,860. So, you have got your profit which is 6,860. So, total sales 13,720 minus 6,860 will give you 6,860 which is your total cost of total cost by of byproduct Y. So next we need to check we have selling expense. In this problem they have not given any information of the selling expense. So the next uh, thing, uh, next item what you are going to minus is your subsequent expenses or cost up to separation. I am um, sorry, cost after separation. That is nothing but your subsequent expenses. So what is that cost is given in the question which is for Y780 plus 780 of materials plus labor 2642 plus on cost 544. So you will Mine, you will add up material labor on cost which will total up 3966 so your total cost 6860 minus 3966 will give you 2894 which is the share of y in the joint cost so now what they have asked us to prepare in the question prepare an account showing the cost of x per ton so we have found out the cost or the share of y so now we will be finding out what is the what is the x expenses actually incurred so we'll prepare prepare main product x account so here we will take the joint expenses as well as the separate expenses what has been incurred so with that we will minus the share of y product then we will get the cost so what is your joint expenses in the question is so now we will be calculating what is the x part x products uh, x products exact cost per unit so main product x and y particulars amount and particulars amount so we will be taking <coughs> taking the materials amount of joint as well as the separate cost of x so here joint cost is the cost of uh, joint cost is the cost of x as well as the y so now we will be taking all the joint cost as well as the uh, separate cost of x add it together and deduct the y's share in joint cost and we will find out what is the cost of the main product product x so the joint cost is so the joint cost is materials joint expenses i'm sorry the joint expenses is materials 19200 <clears throat> and for x it is 7360 so we will be taking 19200 and separate or uh, separate cost of x is 7360 then we have labor 11700 plus 7680 which will give you uh, 19380 next on cost that is on cost 3450 plus 1550 will give you 3000 3450 plus 1550 will give you 5000 so 5000 uh, please change the question it is 1500 so 1500 please make sure that you change this it is 1500 this printing mistake here 1500 so now uh, 3450 plus 1500 will give you 4950 4, then this is your expenses or joint expenses along with x separate expense that is after separation what is the expenses so this expenses includes x's expense as well as uh, as well as y's expense the joint expense includes x expense as well as y's expense now with this x and y uh, x and y joint expense as well as the separate expense of x is being considered with this we will minus the share of y in joint cost so what is the share of y in the joint cost is 2894 so that is by y product account 2894 when you minus from the total 26560 plus 26560 by 60 plus 19380 plus 4950 will give you 50890 minus 2000 
894 which will give you 47,996. So 47,996 is the cost of the product. So this is the cost of the main product as we have minus the share of wise by product share <clears throat> which is 2,894. We have got the uh, balancing amount which is 47,996. As we have uh, looked into the question, the cost per unit for X is the cost per unit for X can be found out when you look into the question that 42 tons of X has been kept out or produced. The output for the X, X is main product X is 142 tons. So the cost what we have got for X product is main product X is 47,996 after deducting Y's by product to cost. So 47,996 the output number of unit tons is 142. So total cost divided by number of tons, tons will give you cost per ton. So 47,996 divided by 142 will give you 338. So 47,996 divided by 142 will give you 338 rupees per ton. So this is the cost per unit of X. So let us calculate what is the cost per unit for Y. So we will prepare by product wise account. So two uh, two portion of joint expenses or two X chemicals from X chemicals uh, wise wise product has been accounted so it will be by Y product in X products account so it will be two X uh, X main products account which is uh, 2894 so this is the portion of joint expenses the wise portion of joint expenses is 2894 then we have the other separate expenses materials labor and on cost which is mentioned in the question which is 780 to 6, uh, 2642 and 544 so the total is 6860 6860 minus the cost of uh, minus uh, I'm sorry 2860 is the total cost which has been incurred so this total cost will be brought down to the credit side as by cost of production so this is the uh, actual cost which has been spent so this cost includes before separation and after separation cost so this is the total cost of 6860 which has been included so that will be brought down here I'm sorry, carried down here, which is 6,860. So as the total cost is 6,860, number of output for this particular product Y is 49 tons. So 40, 49 tons, 49 tons, what will be the cost per unit? If uh, is a cost per unit will be total cost is 6,860 divided by 49 tons, which will give you 140 per ton so by product cost per unit is 140 per ton but it has been sold at rupees 280 per ton in the question which they have stated assuming that the profit uh, before that they have stated in the question that the selling price of buy average to rupees 280 so which is 140 per ton which has been sold for 280 that is why uh, that is how we have got the selling price here so what is the cost per ton is 140 for x it is 338 so this is how we calculate the byproducts and main product calculator uh, 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 format or this is the procedure to calculate for main product and by product so the next problem what we are going to discuss is problem number 3.16 so problem number 3.16, two products P and Q are obtained in a crude form and require further processing at a cost of rupees 5 for P and rupees 4 for Q per unit before sales. Assuming a net margin of 25% of cost, their sale, uh, sales price are fixed at 13.75 and rupees 8.75 per unit respectively. During the period, the joint cost was rupees 88,000 and the output were for P it is 8,000 units, for Q it is 6,000 units. Ascertain the joint cost per unit. So there are two products which has been produced, uh, P and Q, which are obtained in a uh, crude uh, in a crude form, and require further processing at a cost of rupees five for P and for Q it takes rupees. 
four that uh, per unit before sales so before selling they need to undergo a further processing that is from the crude oil they have got up to products which might be petrol uh, or which can be kerosene anything the product is named as p and q for further processing that to which which will be ready for sale before sales they need to be processed for that the cost incurred is five for p and four for q so they are assuming that the net margin 25 percent of cost so the profit will be 25 percent of cost their sale price are fixed so the selling price is fixed which is 13.75 for p and 8.75 for q per unit respectively so for the period so joint cost is also given which is 88000 and they have given the number of units also so then they have asked us to prepare joint cost per unit so let us get into the calculation how are we going to ascertain the joint cost per unit so till now we have we have uh, done the calculation to find out what is the separate expenses before separation what is the expenses after separation what is the expenses then we have divided we have found out what is the cost per unit uh, after separation before separation cost per unit but in this problem they have given the cost per unit we need to find out what is the joint cost so let us look into the quest problem so we'll get into the solution which is first uh, solution for problem uh, 3.16 so the solution part is statement of apportionment of joint cost so first we are going to uh, find out the state apportionment of joint cost and then we will find out what is the total joint cost which is incurred and what is the cost per unit so what they have exactly they have asked is ascertain the joint cost per unit so we need to find out what is the joint cost per unit so let us get into the calculation so now statement of apportionment of joint cost so now product b output output that is the number of p and q is given and number of units is given so when we are apportioning the joint cost we need to use the reverse costing reverse cost method that sales minus your profit minus your uh, what subsequent cost is then you'll find out your total cost that is the share of that product in the joint cost so now the output units which is given in the question which is 8000 and 6000 units so that is the output that is the joint cost was rupees 88000 and the output were 8000 and 6000 so now 8000 and 6000 so selling price per unit which is given in the question what they have stated is assuming a net margin of 25 percent of cost their sales price are fixed at rupees 13.75 and at rupees 8.75 per unit respectively so your selling price is fixed which is 13.75 for p and for q it is 8.75 so 8000 into 13.75 and for six uh, for q 6000 into 8.75 so this is your selling price so now we have got your selling price per unit so and for 8.75 for q now we are going to calculate the profit so what they have stated about profit in the problem so the profit in the problem is stated the net margin is nothing but the profit of 25 percent of cost so it is 25 percent on cost so as you all know how to calculate the percentage it is given on cost you need to look into the uh, uh, solution whether you have the selling price or you whether you have the cost price in this problem we have the selling price so we don't have the cost price but in this question what they have stated they have given 25 percent on cost as you have the selling price you need to find out the percentage on on sales because the sales is given so on sales you need to find out what is the percentage of profit so we're going to calculate the percentage profit on sales as profit on cost is given in the question we need to find out the percentage of sales profit percentage on sales so we are going to calculate here so as it is profit on cost is 25 percent so we will assume cost to be 100 percent so in this problem what they have stated profit on cost is 25 percent so assume cost to be 100 percent so when you assume your cost to be 100 percent so we will use the formula cost plus profit is equal to sales that is the formula what you have so we are assuming as we have assumed cost is 100 percent profit is 25 percent as per the question so sales will be cost plus profit will give you the sales that is 100 is the cost as we have assumed 100 is the cost plus 25 percent is the profit which is given in the problem so 100 is cost plus 25 plus 25 will give you 125 so 
cost 100 plus profit 25 so sales what is your total sales percentage 125 percent so now profit on cost is profit on cost so what is the profit 25 so what is the cost under so profit on cost will be profit divided by cost which is 25 divided by divided by 100 so now we are going to find out profit on sales so what is profit divided by profit on sales in the sense profit divided by sales so what is the profit 25 so what is the sales percentage 125 so 25 divided by 125 so now 25 divided now we will calculate profit on cost so 25 25 divided by 100 how much is it so is equal to 25 divided by 100 will give you 0.25 percentage next profit on sales is equal to 25 is the profit sales is 125 so divided by 125 will give you 0.2 so this these are in the decimal in order to convert this into percentage we need to multiply beyond by 100 as percentage is nothing but multi when any when any decimals is multiplied by 100 it will give you the percentage so 25 0.25 into 100 will give you the percentage of it so 100 so is equal to 20, 0.25 into 100 will give you 25 percentage In the same way profit on sales is equal to 20, 0.2 into 100 will give you 20 percentage so profit on cost as per the question is 25 percentage so profit on sales is 20 percentage so it is simple girls and short to explain we you need to assume cost to be as you have told profit on cost is 25 percent assume cost to be 100 percent so when cost is 100 percent what is the what is the formula what you have for sales cost plus profit is equal to sales so when cost is 100 percent what is the profit given in the problem uh, 25. So cost is 100. 100 plus 25 will give you the sales which is 125. 100 plus 25 will give you 125 percentage. So now profit on cost. Profit on cost in the sense profit divided by cost. So what is the profit? 25 divided by cost. How much is the cost? 100 percentage. So you have got how much? 25 percent. That is what they have stated. So you are going to find out profit on sales. So as you have found out the percentage of sales. So now profit on sales in the sense profit divided by sales so profit is 25 percent sales what you have found out is 125 how did you get this 125 when you assume cost to be 100 100 plus profit 25 will give you 125 so 25 profit divided by sales 125 it will give you it will give you 25 percentage so that is what it will uh, it will give you 1 by 5 in fractions if you look 25 ones are divided uh, 25 ones are and 25 fives are will give you 125 so that that can uh, when you divide in, in your calculator you will get 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 into 100 to find out the percentage will give you 20 percent so profit on 25 percent on on cost is a uh, profit profit which is 25 percent on cost you need to convert it on sales because the selling price is given in the problem so profit on sales is 20 percent so this will have uh, these figures are there we need to buy out it uh, if the profit on cost is given then the sales is so and so it is a table which shows all which shows all the figure what will be profit on sales and cost but this is a simple way to understand how it's how is that pre my table is appearing so this is how you calculate i've already explained how to calculate profit on sales and cost in other videos i this is a simple process to find out profit and so uh, profit on cost and profit on sales as we have found out it is 20 percent on sales so we will calculate it so we will calculate it here. So in the solution, we have found out the profit is 25% on sales. So selling price is 13.75. So 20% of it is 2.75. In the same way, 8.75, 20% of 8.75 is 1.75. So sales minus profit will give you the cost. So when you minus 13.75 of P minus 2.75 will give you 11. Then for Q, 8.75 minus 1.75 will give you 7. 
So that is the cost of sales. So less after spread of cost. That is the cost which is incurred after subtraction, which is there in the problem. So what is the cost which is incurred after subtraction is for further processing is after separating from the main product that is rupees 5 and rupees 4 units before sale. So that is your after separation cost. So rupees 5 for P and for Q it is so when you minus your subsequent expenses or after separation cost you will get your share of that particular product in your joint cost which you have got 11 minus 5 is 6 and 7 minus 4 for Q will give you 3. So this is your cost per unit that is your share share in joint cost before separation which is 6 and 3. So what is the number of units which is produced by P8000 units into what is the cost per unit which is 6. In the same way for Q the number of units produced is 6000 and the cost per unit is 3. So the number of units is 8000 units with the cost per unit which we have got is rupees 6. Then for Q the number of units is 6000 units. The cost per unit what we have got is 3. So 8000 unit into 6 will give you 48000 for P. 6000 units into 3 will give you 18000 for Q. So this is the joint cost for a joint cost or share of joint cost of P and Q which is 48,000 and 18,000. So now the total cost what we have is 88,000. So the total cost is 8. So the total cost what we have is 88,000 which is apportioned based on the ratio of the share of joint cost what we have got now. So the share of joint cost what we have got now is the cost is 48,000 and 18,000. So 48 is to 18 which will give you 8 is to 3. So how did you get 8 is to 3 is 48 is to 18 will give you 8 is to 3. So 48 and 18 lies in your 6 table. So 6 3s are and 6 8s are is known as 40 is give, will give you 48 is is to 18 will be given. So 48 is to 18 based on 6 tables. Uh, 6 8s are and 6 3s are. 6 8s are is 48. 6 3s are is 18. So it will give you 8 is to 3. So this is the ratio of a, uh, which we will be using to divide this 88,000 total cost uh, total co cost proportionately. So 88,000 into 8 divided by 11 will give you 64,000. Then 88,000 into 3 divided by 11 will give you 24,000 for Q. So using this ratio we have found out what is the what is the cost uh, uh, from the total cost we are apportioned you apportionated the cost of P and Q using the ratio 8 is to 3. So they but in the question they have asked us to find out the cost per unit. So to find out the cost per unit we have the cost for P and Q which is 64,000 and 24,000 after apportionating based on the ratio. So the number of units produced for P is 8,000 units and for Q is is 6000 and the cost after apportionating the total cost is 64000 for p and 24000 for uh, for q 64000 for p and 24000 for q so we can find out the cost per unit by dividing the total cost after apportionating from the total cost uh, for each product by product P and Q. For P it is 64,000 which we have got after, uh, after divide, uh, apportionating it using the ratio from the total cost. So 64,000 divided by 8,000 units of P will give you rupees 8 cost per unit for product P and cost per unit for product Q 24,000 is the cost divided by number of units produced by Q is 6,000 which will give you rupees 4. So this is how we have calculated the cost uh, cost per unit for those products. First we will find out what is the share of joint cost uh, share from the joint cost for each by product then using that ratio we will proportionate you of the total cost to each other based on the ratio of their cost then we we have found out the cost per unit by dividing the number of units. Thank you everyone. We will look into the next problem in your upcoming videos.